and here we go this is flash at 20 percent off on thursday the 9th of april or april and <laughs> 9th of may wrong month i was close only missed it by one two zero one and nine and then uh what, what comes up next is usually hey thanks grim for getting me going here on the radio tonight let me get a sound check out of him see did it did it work uh, he would have probably called me by now if it didn't so we'll see what happens and we're gonna do a 20 percent off podcast and find some wacky topic to beat the shit out of tonight so the first thing i want to do is say hello to the rlm bots and bodies Give us something to do, so give us a reason to be in a chat room. You can type all your crazy ideas and sit back and watch the fun. And we got Barman, Beetle, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Miss Kate. Well, Miss Kate said she had guests, so she probably wasn't going to catch the show tonight. But at least, you know, pays enough attention to know there's a show to miss. <laughs> My number one fan on the RLM, Miss Kate. And we got... Uh, Brackets DC, we got Asmo, Chelsea Doni, Friend Slaved, Graham Z, Ib Donsey, Java Doctor Two, J Dread, Ponder Gander, Rain Trust Number One, Vanna White, Vinny, Weather Dork, Woodman, Z Beth Z, Phantom Circle, Hello Honey, I have to Hello Honey Circle, Colfax. 101. Sounds like a spy. Anyway, Cyborg Noodle, me, Frumpy, Gromit, ha, 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 Java Doctor underscore, J's, Nines, J's, Kozu, Carl Marx, Kiss, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, Vanna White underscore, and WD, WWD, W4DKV, who is really anti in disguise, but I won't tell anyone. Anyway, so uh, I usually do this particular podcast solo, and it's probably a good thing because some reason or another, the software and, and hardware don't want to connect and work together, and I think it's the uh, it's the manufacturer's way of selling you products. You know, instead of making you buy shit by law, they just make something obsolete so it won't work until you update it. And it'll work if you fuck with it and tweak it. But there comes a time when you get tired of doing that. So you need to just upgrade and get the new crap and do it that way. And that's the way we live in the world today. Because uh, if it ain't broke, it will be. Everything is disposable and second rate. Ah, crying, crying, crying. Wah, wah, wah. And there's not much we can do about it. I mean... The problems have been made. Well, how do you describe that to two other people? Uh, well, to me, it's all about this globalization shit and how they fucked us all at the same time. Instead of just leaving people to their own lands or their their own people, they've had this great idea. Let's go bomb the shit out of these people and force them to leave. And then when they do leave, we'll put them in these places. And we'll change those places into different places by doing all this shit so we're like in this chess game of big money and corporations businesses governments all this shit all these groups with their weapons and their threats and their guns and all this crap then i, I don't know what to make of any of this like today i seen grim posts a link on the real liberty media.com chat <laughs> And it's uh, the cops being over freaking happy like usual and, and opening fire on a kid. And what l was leading up to it, me and Cirque, I, Cirque didn't want to see. I know what, my wife. So I stopped playing it, but I'll finish playing it later when, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But that was so, just leading up to it was so bad to her because she, real, I mean, this... Violence is one thing, but what the police do is, it's beyond explanations, don't cut it. I and mean, they even, they're, they're on camera. And I heard the cop say it sounds like a cap gun. 
before they got to the damn fence. So, hmm. you know, who's who's stroking who here with these uh, psychos with guns running around shooting people? Who'd want to be a part of that? I, mean, I'd, hmm. And it's happened in as small of places as where Graham Z lives. So I don't think it's the people at this point. I think it's the police. What, how do you get to explain that to somebody else? Whoa. Hmm. Anyway, so I was making a joke today on the RLM chat about, I think I've got a cure for people voting. And what you how you cure them of it is if you're going to vote, you have to have a tattoo over your eye. And it's the left eye for the, Repu- for the Democrats and the right eye for the Republicans, right? Left and right, get it? And the the Democrats, they get a star, and the Republicans get a square. But you got to be marked for life because those these decisions that are being made in your name, you should be responsible for it. I bet that would clean politics up in like 20 minutes. A little responsibility for what the people in positions of decision do. And then it's there's what they tell you they do. And then other times it's, they told you what they did. They just lied to you about why they did it. Well, they always do that. The lying's always a, a, a characteristic of the equation. It's always there. If the if the system told you the truth about what they were doing, it wouldn't be the system. You wouldn't do, you wouldn't support a thing like that. So what it seems to do is bullshit people. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of folks that are just not. They're not all about taking it anymore, you know. And so far, it's just on the internet. The uh, like minds dot com. If you post something anti-Semitic, you know, or what I would say, something that exposes Israel for what Israel truly is, and all the possibilities behind what a Jew is or is not. And things change a little bit when people start commenting about it on a public forum. Now, what that brought Facebook was, as it grew, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. They started controlling what you said. Well, this place isn't mine. This isn't controlling what you say that I know of. But then how do I know? Maybe I'm only seeing the shit they want me to see, too. Just they do a different, you know, their approach is, they're, they're sending out all the crap that the mainstream won't allow. You can find it on mines. And then you can find a lot of mainstream crap on there. I found a Senate hearing link today about, (laughs) wow, they tell you one story and it's so off, absolutely the opposite of what they represent. Somehow or another, and as I was a child, I learned the same shit, is the United States is out there in the rest of the world, you know, defending something. And then the older I got, the less defending I noticed they were doing, and the more criminal behavior <laughs> was apparent. Um, hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't believe that you have to think like a thief to catch a thief necessarily. Some things are just obvious, right? But the way that the governments of the planet, <laughs> this one too, the one I'm in, I ain't no different or any better. The difference is simply, in America, it's barbed wire, and over here in Denmark, it's rope. There you go. It's a little bit of the illusion of freedom, so you don't feel like a, what would you call it, like a captive or a a, a victim. Man, I mean, damn, there's lots of people, even on the Real Liberty Media, that are not too pleased with life in, in America right now. Well, hmm. When I was living there, I don't think I gave two flying shits, really. I mean, it was something to know, but it didn't affect me in any way I felt intruded by on at two. But over the years, the changes that I've I've learned about, things that have have happened legally, (laughs) socially, too. Socially is just out of control. I mean, you can take freedom too far (laughs) in a sense of... Uh, making it this free-for-all and then calling it anarchism. You know, that's not fair. It's very misleading the way that the the state actually does get away with the shit they do 
is they make you think it was this other group's idea. Well, how did the group get their attention to make it a fucking law in the first place? See, it, eh, I don't buy any of this. It's just we're told stories. We're just told them quicker. <laughs> what the truth is, well, I don't fuck. What would that have to do with anything anyway? What difference does it make the cop, like, for example, on on the link that I was talking about, that Grim posted about the cops, uh, they have videotape of themselves approaching something, kind of mocking it like, ah, ha, 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 and then they get there and what, so, something changed suddenly? I haven't seen the end, so I'm kind of talking of out my butt at the moment. But I'm assuming by the headline, it's not going to end well for the kid. And the chat that I read didn't seem to be pro-police for their great judgment and uh, fine character. You know, think, man, how can you possibly justify having a position of uh, social decision like that when you're afraid of every fucking thing that goes pop? So, hmm. I think somebody's being lied to is what it is. I don't think they're afraid of shit. I think they just get told that to, you want to keep your job. Well, this is what you have to say. Because saying words aren't deeds, but somehow or another, the word seems to be way more important to the public than what really happened. Uh, what really happened, fuck that, that's over. Let's drag out what we can say about it for 10 or 20 or 30 years. And when the, the and from the beginning the truth was in your face the whole time, you just were never being told it by the people that you trust to tell you the truth. Hmm. And now the internet come along. So the the media is using shit off the internet like, uh, for example, fake news. Wow, they've been giving us fake news since they started reporting freaking news. That's what it was. It's what it's always been. The news is owned by like six corporations. All, every bit of it, all the public information is all owned by six people or six groups. Then the free stuff on the internet, those are real people taking their, you know, their ass in their hands and getting on a link or making a video of something or filming somebody doing something. Or like I like to give Vinny some credit for his participation at the Bundy Ranch because right now it's no big thing but 20 years go by and that will be huge in in the, the history of the anarchist and the status because th this is the game that these status play that's what they choose to do they're going to fight it out in court and then when push comes to shove and they show guns then they chose, oh, well, let's go to court instead of shooting each other. So is that actually an improvement over where we started, or is it a loss? Because, hmm, well, once you give power to the state and recognize them as whatever they think they are, then you kind of belong to them, you know, in a sense. I mean, this is the way I see it. Oh, hey, thanks, Vinny. I don't know. I'm just rambling about things that are uh, in my face on a daily basis or weird ideas. Like that weird idea about tattoo your voters. And I'll bet you most of your people won't want to vote if they knew they had to wear the fucking brand of a voter for the rest of their life and be responsible for what the fuckers in power do. You know, think about that. We're all living in an, an anonymous life. Okay, so you put stickers on your freaking car does not mean you voted for anybody. <laughs> There's people that are so fucked up. They join groups after the group becomes popular because the group is popular. <laughs> Me? Eh, not so much. Uh, if anything, I think I spend more time on the underdog. You know, The, the one that uh, isn't concerned about being popular but has a, uh, a, an input to what's going on. And it, not everybody writes like freaking, uh, you know, what's his name? That guy that writes all the books, Stephen King. You know, there's a lot of people in this world that uh, just get by at stuff. Now, there's a lot of areas in life like the computer. I should have uh, pursued it, but I didn't know I was going to need it, so I didn't. And now I don't want to be learning all this crap about the damn computer, all this stuff that other people already know. 
You know, so like doing the radio podcast in a way, there's all this time to fill up. Grim was asking people, hey, do a show. I say it every, I, I forget, but I say it as often as I can remember. You know, it's not that freaking hard to do this. It's just a matter of, uh, I guess, making up your mind. It's a little nerve wracking in the beginning. I was a nervous, jittery, couldn't couldn't uh, feel comfortable by myself doing it. Then after a while, hmm, I think it was probably doing a show with Jose, <laughs> where for you know two hours I think I got to speak five or six cent full sentences, and an occasional uh huh, because Jose, wow, he knows everything. You can't teach Jose anything, because. That's what Jose is knowledge in a in a human form for you to to come and drink from, you know the, the voice of reason, <laughs> and people that that promote themselves like that usually are the opposite in the first place, you know. Wow, but hey, I don't know. I just said I have a lot of opinions about shit, and I can't prove or disprove anything I say except to myself. And I think, in the overall scheme, all that really freaking matters is what I think anyway. It's my life, not yours. What? How does my life change any at all if you don't approve of something I'm doing? Ooh. And how do you know I'm doing it? Maybe I just said I'm doing it. Maybe I'm not doing it at all. Could it not exist? Could it be just another part of the illusion? But if you don't take this life seriously and stay on topic and follow the rules and be a good little sheep, well, people get annoyed with you quickly. Uh, hmm. I think it's a balance of we get annoyed of each other for a lot of different reasons, but we're taught to do this and we're taught to behave that way on purpose by a system that is so corrupt and so disgusting they call it a fucking swamp. This is how the modern day thinks of American politics. Their headquarters is the swamp. Wow, now you get some greasy, freaking slimy fucking Trump in there. Of all the fucking families to choose an idiot from. Bush was bad. Okay, that was one thing. But this Trump dumbass, well, there's a... There's a mouthpiece just waiting for a place to have a nice wretch. I have yet... How many years has this idiot been in power? I've not heard two fucking good things about this idiot Trump since he started his thing. Uh, since he was campaigning. Everybody despises him. And the people that don't despise him just hate the other side. <laughs> they, they don't even know who Trump is. They got no idea what they bought. No idea who he's related to. They don't do their research. They think they're free of this freaking... Uh, he was an outsider, my ass. This was a long-range fucking plan from so many years ago that you wouldn't believe it because you think you're voting. <laughs> you ain't voting for anything or anybody. And Congress does not listen to the people. Congress will tell you openly. They don't, they don't do anything because we want them to do anything. So, hmm, well, I'm not going to claim America anymore any damn way. It's the voice, I tell you, that makes everybody think I'm American. Uh, but, because hmm. once I was in Scotland a couple years back, <laughs> and I was getting some mail, some friends of mine in the States sent me something. So I, I had a few minutes, the kid, uh, guy at the mail room was going to go get it, and when he came back, I said, thank you. And he said, oh, you're American. I said, no, 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 I'm from Iran. He says, you're not from Iran. I said, yeah, no, yeah, really? No, I'm American. <laughs> but it was just fun to watch him not want to call me a lion sack of shit and just act confused because you, you hear an American voice. It, it's either Canada or America where I was. There weren't too any other choices. So I just thought he was playing dumb because I was being a smartass. But who is to know? Maybe the guy couldn't tell. <laughs> but Freddie Mercury was from Iran. Well, he was from Persia. He was born in Persia when it was Persia. 
than it became Iran later. Now the Americans want to attack Iran. Well, the Jews want you, us, everybody, everybody kill. The, well, Israel wants the United States to preemptively strike Iran because Iran might do something if, if to them, to Israel. You know, victim, 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 victim. And this shit doesn't ever fucking end. You know, they're going to probably do another. Uh, they were predicting in the, I think on mines, I've seen a link about them. They think that the Jews are probably going to attack another U.S. something or other hoochie. I mean, what? These fuckers got balls, I'll tell you. Because they even have a celebration day in Israel where they celebrate the Twin Towers falling. And then they got the fucking gall to complain about, you know, being victimized by everybody. When, no, just like the states, the big gorilla with the big toys. No, people are just nice to you because if they're if they're not nice, you Gaddafi them, and nice means you do business with them under their terms, period, or you die. And that's how serious all this fucking shit is, depending on the bit of dirt you live on. Maybe once the powers that be have extracted enough or the lion's share of whatever resources a country has. Then they go and bomb the shit out of it after that. And they've been stealing oil for a long time, so it's probably oil. And But then again, oil's a, um, it's not it's not a fossil fuel. It's, it actually, it's reproductive. It <laughs> We get lied to about, uh, there's so much information on the internet. So if this is news to you, you haven't heard about fossil fuel being just a big, another stroke, like global warming or the Easter Bunny, shit like that. Most of the values that people hold dearly and really support and feel strongly about are a bunch of bullshit. And you can't prove it to them because they're <laughs> they're dazzled by the brilliance of the bullshit. And then there's only so many ways to discuss what they see. So if it's if I hear it the way my indoctrination towards that stuff goes, I'm just going to hear a lot of bullshit. Because, nah, that can't happen. You know, that's why they call it miracles. Because, you know, we have a population and where I'm from stupid enough to be experimented on by its own government and be okay with it. Nobody ever does nothing about it. They, they continue it every freaking day. At least Denmark's only got 6 million morons living in it, not 300 plus because uh <laughs> wow i mean the bigger you are you know the, the nastier it seems to be not not the better the bigger crowded cities of the uk or europe ick, i wouldn't i wouldn't visit them now hmm. so hmm. Yeah, anyway so i guess freddy town it is for a, a couple of more days ah Hey, I wrote something here. Let me see if this makes any sense in the past tense. Oh, you know, I think about all this. Uh, we were talking. About, well, they weren't really talking. We were just mm, pontificating at each other about a, a standard we agree on in the reallibertymedia.com chat. And that's that word game. The, the legal beagles play on us with this legal and illegal. No, it's the same fucking thing. Just like Democrat and Republican. They're not goddamn different. You think they're different. The people that make the decisions behind all that shit aren't pleasing anybody on either of those two sides. So, figure it out. <laughs> it's not rocket science. I mean, I guess it It takes a lot of unindoctrination to look at your government and just turn your back on the don't no 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 it's not about trusting it it's about believing it trust it all you want but man if you can't prove what you trust then that's like religion you know it's all faith-based and no 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 trust is what i have with people about you know 10 bucks or whatever some little bit of money that that i can trust you with but what you're shooting my body with in, out of a needle 
you want me to trust a government that does what it does to tell me the truth? Hmm. How many legal cases are there right now against Big Pharma for damages done <laughs> between, you know, the time they started and now? And it just keeps going and going. So, hmm. It's as though we're just hand-fed a bunch of shit. And they know that nobody's going to join up together and do anything to stop anybody from doing anything. Because the cops will shoot you. And I believe that because people don't get together to stop the system from doing anything. And when they do, or when they raise a sniff, the first thing that's done to them is they're... Um, eliminated from social media platforms as quickly and quietly as possible you know when you're popular in this life that's when you got problems not when you're like me small people you know small time thing just have a little fun on the radio and talk to people about the shit i think you know it doesn't have to be the shit you think it could be 10 miles from the shit you think but that's the point about all this is what you think is true is true. It doesn't matter what it, I can paint any picture I want to with words, and if you don't agree with it already, it's not likely that I'm going to say anything that's going to make you think, oh, I get anarchy now. It isn't about more than one person, is it? Hmm. That's what society is. See, anarchy is an individual thing for an individual person. And there's a set of fucking simple rules. They're so simple that even a moron like me can follow them. Uh, I'll give you an example. Do no harm. <laughs> now, I would just take it for face value that the people that live amongst each other, if they're using words to be pricks, then they're doing harm. So, hmm. But punishment. What what kind of punishment do you give somebody because they said something that pissed you off? Well, how about five years in state prison? That ought to generate a few dollars for the state. I mean, that's what it's coming to. You you can't say this. You can't say that. You can't think this. If you think this, then you're in that job because everybody else thinks that. And if you're not thinking that and this, then you're really a wacko because everybody else has at least picked one of these two, but you want to pick number three. Oh, what's wrong with you? Then everybody from number one and number two, then they're all both together against you at number three. <laughs> That's how gangs work, people. So, I think I decided to keep my gang to a very, very minimum. I got Cirque, Hannah, and Dr. Cooper. And that's about it. There's people I associate with, you know, in the physical world and the electronic world. But life is good enough uh, that if the world explodes tomorrow, I can't complain. I've had a pretty good time while I was here, you know, dancing on this rock, whatever the hell this thing is we're doing. I know everybody, th I learned this in school, and I learned that in school, and you don't understand, blah, blah, because you don't read the book. Yeah, well, there's lots of books that are just full of crap. All you got to do is read them. So, how do you decide what you read is crap or true? What motivates an individual to join a freaking group and become one of the smart people. It's like uh, the typing. You notice that when people get all flustered and they're in a hurry, their their typos come out of them. Or sometimes we typo just when we're bantering about absolutely nothing, just giggling on the main feed, having a a coffee in the morning or whatever not really saying anything particular just little this is and that's and, and you type a word with you know inverted as, is is si or you spell a word wrong and i've started to believe that under certain circumstances that there shows a fella's not so dumb after all now i'm not saying that when you're pissed off and you're flustered and you're typing fast part i'm saying the the other part when you're just relaxed and you're really just chitter chattering with one of your buddies on the, or one of the gals, whatever, on the inner chat web, that 
your typos are kind of showing people that, yeah, I, I know there's the rules, but you know what? Fuck the rules. I think it's an inside way of trying to escape the the curriculum and the rules just to be different. But we've all been taught that it's stupid and they prove it in ways like, well, they explain it by the guy. Hey, look, see, he's mad and angry and he's writing too fast and he's blah, 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 blah. But they don't pay attention to the other guy during that explanation. So the way that we're we're taught to see life, I think, is directed by certain entities, <laughs> government. Pa- basically, that's it. There's not other any other entity. They're all connected now. They work together as a team. Uh, finance, religion, and government. And those are the three things that we all, all of us, equally to some level seem to to rely on it or depend on use it as a service whatever you want to call it uh and if you don't play by on one of those th- three ideas you're probably insane and you, you live on on a mountaintop you know chasing rabbits for toilet paper then on the other hand i i mean this is my opinion uh, but people are See, nose to nose, I don't find people so combative. I was walking to uh, Hannah to go meet Cirque tonight. And we have a neighbor who lives caddy across the street. And she is one of us, non-driving people. And she walks to her job in the city, the little village here. City. <laughs> it's almost funny. And uh, be they're doing road work, so we were both using the bike path. And I got Hannah on this, I don't know, 10-foot leash or so. And Hannah knows her, and the woman knows Hannah, and Hannah runs up to go hello her. And she was so, you know, just smiling away when she passed by. You know, she stopped and pet the dog a few bit for a bit. And as I walks up, I waited a little bit, and then she said, you know, have a nice day or something in English so that I would recognize her too. And uh, that's one of the neighbors, so we, we get along good enough. I mean, they know my dog. When my dog sees them on the road in a, you know, far, from, not not far, but a distance from the house, she still knows who they are. And, you know, well, even if Hannah didn't know. No, Hannah passes people with me when we're walking and doesn't do that. So this, yeah. Uh, well, if somebody stops her to pet her, but when I run into a neighbor, somebody that's familiar... That's a whole nother thing. Hmm. Let's see what's on the chat tonight. I'm just bouncing all over the psychedelic space universe tonight. One idea to the next, not focusing on nothing. But uh, I have such a quiet, peaceful life here that this is what I think people should uh, be protected you know, by government to have. If You know, if your government, like the games that I believe government plays here are a little softer they're not so they're not so vicious as from any overpopulated area that i've lived in so i don't pick on americans that way because i've lived in a few other countries besides the u.s of a but sadly I and mean, this is not an opinion i hold all to myself is most people that have had uh problems with law enforcement had it in the u.s of a like they never had it anywhere else. Uh, 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 oh, Rob and Aunt Ty are bantering about making up some truth because people likes to lie. They, if you told them the truth about fluoride, uh, I'm telling you, I post links on mines, and I've been on mines for a while. Not very fucking popular because the things that I believe, the mainstream of minds doesn't believe that stuff these people are still voting they're still supporting religion they're still supporting college education all all the traps that have that they weren't they weren't traps in the beginning they evolved into traps in the end when the government bought up all the debt <laughs> see in, in some debt-based society not it's fueled by freaking promises of tomorrow and people make fortunes and lose fortunes in the in days, months, years. So it keeps the reality of it all looking very good, while the most of it's held by just a few people. 
But if you have a big enough population, segregate them. Keep this financial area has got this, and that financial area has got that. But I don't know. There's so many people now. I think it's collapsing into itself at this point. Truth, says Grimner. I don't know what the truth is. I don't really care what the truth is. I just make up my own fucking truth, and the rest of you people can leave me the fuck alone. And that's what happened. As, I don't know where all this interaction with the globe comes in. I don't buy Italian shoes. I don't buy um, Middle Eastern oil. I don't buy... There's lots of shit I don't support. I do, do not support Israel. I'm boycotting Israel, too. Fuck Israel. Right in the eye with a stick. And it won't be too long before I get probably kicked off the radio or something for some infraction like bashing Israel because you're being an anti-Semitic. Doesn't even fucking mean anything anti-Semitic. Call a thief a thief, but I'm anti-Semitic because I called him by his country name. Wow. How fucked up is that? You can't even call a nigger a nigger anymore because, well, then you're being racist. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, this world, we're just chock full of all kinds of surprises, aren't we? I don't know if I mentioned this on the radio yet or not. I might have earlier. Maybe I should just skip it. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I was going on a rant earlier. The Fed plays dumb with the public in ways that were predicted. They were talked about on TV in the 50s. Uh, people knew this was going to happen. But that side of the voice was hush, 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 hush. No, no, no. You don't tell them that. You lie to them. Marijuana is bad for you. And marijuana is a cousin of hemp. So... Because they're related, guilt by association and bloodline, of course, you understand legalities here. They must be prohibited because they're good for you. And if you use them, you will not use us. I have a funny suspicion that a majority of the people on the reallibertymedia.com chat that don't support Goobermint, they smoke marijuana. That's right. Cannabis, the devil's lettuce, call it what you want, weed. Hmm. And doing this activity, somehow, by some magic fucking, I don't know what, puts us in a different class of carbon-based life form, different from the non-cannabis smoking life form. What is the difference between... Hmm, not using cannabis so that you can fit into society and be a fine, upstanding, short-haired young person and become a slave to the state eventually. <laughs> They're going to get you somewhere. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, yeah. And then that leads me to something else I was reading about. Now, this was really bizarre. That the, uh, the government workers, federal government workers per, um, I guess it would be per capita, they compared uh, the, all the wealthiest people of the working class, and they come out with a, a, a annual income of about 50, 50 grand or so, give or take. And it was like within 10,000 from the bottom to the top. They separated in three classes. And uh, <laughs> so the federal government is actually making more than people that own their own business, Per, per annually and they're making more money than uh, people in the private sector as a collective when you when you balance out their their average income amongst all the politicians and then you compare it to a hundred million people that are working for a living and they manipulate the numbers so it doesn't look so bad <laughs> so you you only they're only making fifty seven thousand dollars a year. Well, yeah, as a collective. But look at the pricks up on the top that are making a lot more than that. And then they got insider trading deals in the stock market. and Banking futures fall into your lap from heaven. And you know which shit to purchase and what to dump. Because, well, we're going to make this illegal next year. So get rid of it all now. <laughs> and then when a year from now, we'll, we'll just we'll make a law that says, well, you can't use this now. 
and people will just accept whatever we are told is good for us or bad for us, as long as we're told by the right people. Now, I don't happen to be one of those people, and I know there's a handful anyway, well, maybe more than a handful, you guys are big, uh, <laughs> a handful of names on the reallibertymedia.com that see the side of the coin I see. Because it's not a pretty side. Ooh, it does not look good to look at the side of the coin I'm looking on. Well, I guess it could be worse. I could be a registered Republican and all proud of myself for voting, voting for uh, old Trump and not have a freaking clue about what that truly means because... Trump didn't do anything for anybody so far. I have yet to see one productive move. Oh, he got investigated by the FBI for two fucking years so that they could settle and go, well, nothing nothing happened. Oh, wow, wasn't that a nice distraction from what was happening? See, this is how I see this shit. While you were all supposedly talking about what the government is doing, well, they're not doing that. That's just what they tell you they're doing. And then what they're really doing, you don't want to know what they're really doing. Because if you wanted to know what they're really doing, you wouldn't vote for them. You wouldn't support them. Now, I didn't go to any extremes. This is where life took me. I went where life went. Somehow or another, it went here. Other people, I don't know. Maybe they can go through life without uh, changes and opportunity coming their way. I don't see, see that my lifestyle does not. It doesn't show me how other people live. It only shows me how I lived. So I have no idea what it's like to want to be in one spot your whole damn life. I Now, I understand what it's like to want to finish somewhere for what's left of it. But getting here was, well, that was a rocky roller coaster kind of trip. I enjoyed some of it and some of it, eh, could have done without it, but it happened. And it always seemed that no matter what life did that disappointed me when I come out of it on the shit end of the stick, there was always something to replace whatever it was that I lost. Would it be a, a relationship or a musical equipment, whatever, a uh, set of paint, you know, something that I thought I wanted. Uh, shit, who, who is to know what you is good for you and what isn't except you, and here we are in life, and all we ever do is follow the fucking directions we're given by a bunch of lying thieves that are shooting people. <laughs> I mean, the representation of the state is the police, and they're killing children with cap guns, or a child, or whatever the fuck that was all about. I mean, that's that's a representation of the people. That's what the that's what the people are taught to believe. Whatever the government does, it's on your behalf. That's representing you. And they've done this in every freaking state, in small towns, big towns. Some of it's faked. The What do you call it? Those uh, mass shootings are a bunch of bullshit. <clears throat> that Sandy Hoax crap. No, what? Now that Columbine one, I'm not so sure about that either. All these things that happen to uh, persuade the gun lover to not love his pistols and his guns I think that's over the top I I don't I don't feel that in love with a gun one way or the other I think a gun is a sissy weapon you know if you're willing to really fight somebody what do you need a gun for to protect myself from other guns <sighs> then, well, then that's the gun isn't the problem. Then who's holding the other end? You know, who's on the other end of the weapon that you're so afraid of that you don't want to be unarmed? Hmm. I wonder because uh, everybody I've ever seen on video go against the law, they never win. Not one of them wins ever. They always get cut down. So, I mean, from Bonnie and Clyde to... Uh, you know, Waco, and all the shit in the middle. I mean, I know those are two, uh, I guess, extreme explanations of that point, but shit. Waco was over some uh, some church grievances and uh, gun laws. 
Some bullshit about guns. It's all, see, that's the argument that the, the law uses, like they used weed. I guess the places that they made it legal, I would assume that the police are not retrained. Eh, spent a whole career doing that. You, hey, what's that smell? When there was nothing to smell, they just wanted a reason to search you. Huh? 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 Because, uh, hmm. I, I didn't get treated that badly by the law as far as that kind of crap went. When the cops that I did encounter, except for maybe, I don't know, I guess three or maybe four times over all the trouble I had when I was a kid, maybe three of them or four of them weren't all that great. But for the most part, cops just, uh, I don't know, didn't didn't seem to, I didn't get their attention. But I remember hearing terrible stories from other people. Oh, yeah, they said that we, we weren't even smoking. We didn't even have any in the car that night. And the cops said, hey, we smell weed. How, how do you smell something that ain't there? Well, it's their word against yours. And in a court of law, in an admiralty fucking court, people, where you really go, that cop's word is as good as gold and yours isn't. The, there's, the players in the game matter, and you, not so much. And that defense attorney bullshit, that fool is working for the judge just like the prosecutor is. They're probably best fucking friends. They go golfing together. Uh, we're outsiders in their territory. That's what law is. Law is like this uh, this ego trip about how you are so much better than them that they need you to explain to them the trouble they're in but don't tell them the truth about it, just the juicy bits, you know, like you're in trouble. And you're in a cage, and we got you here with the help of these guns and handcuffs, or you probably wouldn't be here, because that's what they do. Well, in a free society, what what do you call treating people in that fashion? And here we are, 2019, and being searched and pulled over and stopped and analyzed is just normal. People don't think that's just what happens. Wait a minute. I'm pretty much sick of all that. So fortune seemed to bring me to a place to meet somebody that actually lives in a place that has the, the lifestyles that I would want to use. Not the, the crap I was shoved down my throat all my life. Under the guise of freedom. And it started out, it was relatively free, but the older I got, the bigger the population grew, the more control that the system started to show it had, because people comply. If you give in and you don't fight, well, then you'll be a good slave. And that's why Nixon had those kids at Kent State shot. The very reason that we're, that I'm sitting here now, sniveling about my Freedoms that I don't have, blah, 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 blah. Because they once did exist in reality. People actually lived free to do things that were free. Drive a car, build a house. Um, I seen a link today about this guy that was uh, doing fairly well, lived in New York, was some kind of builder. But he realized that the debt he had incurred with his big fancy house and all that, all the money he was making, he couldn't support it in the long run. So he said he sold off what he, he got lucky, he sold his big old house, blah, 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 blah. And then he found uh, a big lot of uh, desert, desert land in Texas. I think I wrote it down. Uh, South Bre Brewster City, Texas, I think was, uh, Brewster County, Texas. And it's unincorporated land. It's desert. It's harsh life. Harsh, harsh, harsh. And then he did a video showing what he built to survive in and how he's living. and It's really interesting stuff. But he doesn't have a neighbor for like, I don't know, 50 miles or something. He's isolated alone out in the desert. To He's so um, disgusted with us that he would rather live alone like that. And he's my age, give or take. Might be a little older. <clears throat> but, see, luckily for me, I never hit that, that turning point with society to abandon it completely. 
and go out and be a hermit out in the desert and live on, you know, 50 acres or something. But the way he was explaining it, the land, nobody wants the land anything. Well, you can't, it's got shitty weather, you can't do anything with it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what the details of why that land is where it is, uh, price-wise. But eh, I saw what he was doing, and I thought, damn, that's pretty damn impressive. But to um, to be that dead set against everything that's going on in society, to want to live out uh, out where there's nothing and nobody. I haven't got that far yet. I'm still willing to deal with uh, the Danish society. They they don't bother me any. They're very nice people. Get along good. Blah 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 blah. They got good pastries too. They, man, I used to have a uh, um, Winchell's donuts when I was a little kid. I remember my uh, my younger days, and they changed the recipes and they started cooking with crap and they killed the cook. They killed the donut. You know, we used to go and get them right hot, hot out of the oven. And the people that would, they knew my dad from getting coffee and donuts. So he'd bring us and they'd make sure that, you know, we'd get there and there'd be some hot ones for us. It was really a, a nice, I was like six, seven, eight years old. So it was a long time ago. But here, now today, I'm at the grocery getting my milk today. And uh, the girl behind the counter is serving a woman with her two kids. And instead of putting the kids' stuff in a bag that they're going to take and throw away right away anyway, she had her, uh, the roll was in, you know, she had her glove on. She hands the kid the roll right to hand to hand. And her sister too, so they both had their little donut cookie thing or whatever it was, pastry. And they were skipping out the store going eating their stuff. But I don't, I don't think I've seen anything like that, in, you know, except for here quite a while we're up even even strangers are nice to strangers and to today this isn't you know five years ago when i first got here this is a brand new day blah 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 and then tomorrow i'm going to get up in the morning and see what happens and i'm not one of those end of the worlders you know like grim's rooting for the meteor and gooberzilla wants a spaceship to escape and Han, Hans, Hansel wants to be the ruler of the world. And Vinny wants everybody to be honest and treat each other right, but they don't want to. Pisses him off. <laughs> Rob Works wants to make, you know, a joke out of this and a joke out of that, and then occasionally throw in some serious, but eh, you never know. Right, right, right. Hey, Beetle. Beetle's here. Anti's here. Friends, slaves here. Yeah. They're chitter chattering it up. Eh, Don's here. And uh, they're chitter chattering up in the chat room tonight. But I, I've got no luck with reading the chat. And uh, but you know what I do have luck with is reading a link. And I read some real weird stuff today. And I guess I'll do the Grim and uh, Mary thing, and I'll copy and paste the link. But this is the kind of shit that the press, whatever the press is, I don't know the media, information. This is the kind of stuff that these people want us to read about. Okay, so I think uh, an overabundance of negative, you know, given to you in terms of information and knowledge, it's still an overabundance of negative. And this thing is called uh, Couple Dies of Plague Sparks Outbreak Fears After Eating Raw Marmot. Uh, This is apparently... Uh, I guess is written by, I don't know who is, hold on, I always have a problem with that, this internet thing does everything backwards, I don't know, it says here, a Mongolian couple ate the raw, uncooked internal organs of a marmot, a large, squirrel-like rodent, in the belief that its kidney, stomach, and gallbladder would bring them good health. However, according to health officials, the two died on May 1st when it turned out the marmot wasn't so healthy. Their death sparked fears of 
lo a local outbreak of the bubonic plague, leading to a six-day quarantine of 118 people, including locals and foreign tourists. The town of Zaganur, which lies near the border separating Mongolia from Russia and has a population of roughly 1,400, was sealed off from the outside world after the ethnic Kazakh couple contracted Kazakh. Kazakh? Ah, that must be that Kazakh word. Contracted the old-fashioned bubonic plague from the infected marmot. According to Arientuya Orochurpurev, an official with the World Health Organization in the country's capital, Ulan Bet. Bat Batar. Wow, this just sounds like they're just making shit up and throwing an alphabet soup out there. Sebastian Peake, a volunteer with the American Peace Corps, told Agents France Press, after the quarantine was announced, not many people, even locals, were in the streets for fear of catching the disease. As of Tuesday, however, the quarantine was officially lifted, allowing scores of tourists to finally leave the area. Luckily, no other cases of the bubonic plague have been reported since then. According to local governor, I, I fuck these names, I've got too many vowels, so I'm not reading it. In Mongolia, about one person per year dies of the plague, usually through similar incidents of locals eating raw meat containing the plague bacterium Yersinia pestis, according to the National Center for Zoonotic Disease. Zoonotic disease. Wow. History is filled with cases of plague, epidemics responsible for killing millions, including the Black Death in the Middle Ages that killed an estimated 50 million people. Bill Gates can do that with a needle. Don't get all cocky here, Mr. History. You ain't seen shit yet. That's just a sniff. Ah, okay, back to the story. Modern antibiotics have made such diseases manageable, however. The bubonic plague is one of the most common forms of plague and is transmitted through infected fleas and animals, including rodents such as rats and squirrels, rabbits and prairie dogs, according to the U.S. Centers. <laughs> Here we go. The CDC. Uh, the CDC notes that human infections occur in parts of Africa, Asia, and even in western regions of the United States. Whew, wow, that's some valuable fucking information there to put down on paper there, Mr. CDC. Who would ever think that? <sighs> what we see in the West is... The fleas will crawl up to the entrance of the burrow and wait for a host to come by. If they get on another rodent, they can live on. Then they've been successful. But they can also jump on humans or on dogs or coyotes or cats. That was worse than the other thing. Man, this is writing is terrible. Anyway. In the late 1800s, millions of people died in China and Hong Kong before the connection was made with rodents, whose elimination drastically lowered the incidence of plague in the East Asian country. Uh, yeah. Well, let's see. In the 19, what, 70s, rats outnumbered people in New York City 8 to 1. So, yeah, there seems to be some problem with your story there, with this rats thing. Anyway. The main symptom of bubonic plague is swollen, painful lymph nodes, usually in the armpit, neck, and groin areas, the CDC notes. This is often accompanied by fever, headache, chills, extreme fatigue, bleeding, and open sores. Death can arrive within a few short days. An event more virulent type of plague is the pneumonic plague, uh, even more which is transmitted between humans through coughing. Wow, what a horrible way to write that. But, okay. And these are the things, all right, as an example, right? Not uh, anything I subscribe to particularly. I grabbed something that had a weird headline. To make the point of, 
the knowledge inside the story is sometimes you don't even need to bother with all that shit. It's just filler. It doesn't mean any freaking thing anyway. But that it got somebody paid. Somebody actually got paid probably to write that for whoever they you know work for. But it didn't say anything. Nothing that the title didn't tell you. Not to me. Hmm. Maybe I'm just too stupid to understand the Kazakhstanian language or whatever language that was originally written in. You know, it's a lot of the times, it's like legal. English carries a lot more words than, say, Danish. So for Cirque to explain something, there's a completely different structure to the sentence. And a lot of the words, they don't use, they don't use them. Or they have one word for things we have two words for. And sometimes ten words for it depends on the thing. But I was having fun with Cirque tonight because uh, she was telling me about the oceans and the seven seas. You know, I don't know. I was just fucking around with the numbers. And uh, I, boy, I, I'm probably going to suffer a horrible death because I do that to my poor little wife. I tease her about numbers and round and flat and all that kind of shit because I don't, I don't really, don't tell anybody, but I don't really care. It's topic for uh, conversation, but value. What value does a bit of knowledge really have in, in the overall of life? How does it? How could it possibly make me happy to know which president was shot by which assassin in which year? The only thing I really should know is that they were all shot <laughs> and stopped, and we were let go. But no, people insist on being um, subject. Here they're subjects of a queen. In America, they're citizens of a state. Same shit. They just don't understand what the words mean. Because the words were, were explained to us in one way. And then when you look up what all the shit means, it means something completely fucking different in the definition of how it's being applied to you. And you're doing it with your own consent through trickery and deceit. And it makes everybody who hears that, oh, there we, here we go with the conspiracy theories. Da, 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 da. Yeah, well, I always hear that part. But you know what I never hear is defense about who I'm conspiracy theorying about. Like mm, the Federal Reserve Bank, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Want to tell me how I'm wrong and that we should not do this to each other? But then, of course, we live in a debt-based society where if we didn't have debt, what would we have? Huh? Well, we would. This wouldn't work without the the debt mentality to pay tomorrow for what you have now. Or if it wasn't for that, people would insist on, "Hey, I'm, I'm selling it to you now. Gam, pay me now." What? <laughs> they wouldn't understand that. Put this on my card. That they understand, but uh. Yeah, I'm still alive. What about it, Moose Girl? This is 20% off on uh, Thursday night, the 9th of May, 2019. <laughs> no, you guys didn't know I was live. <laughs> oh, if you're listening, I don't know. I'm just, I'm carrying on about nothing in particular. I have lots of opinions, Moose, lots of them. But I don't think that. If you can't prove your reality to me with your stories, well, how could I expect for you to see the reality I see and agree with me? So all this agreeing with each other crap, uh, I don't buy it. Nah, somebody's bullshitting somebody somewhere. You know, it's uh, to me it seems to be more obvious of the group does not agree about a whole lot. And the reality of what's going on is not re represented to each of us the same way, but we're all seeing a negative. So, hmm, that could be a common link, but it's not a good link. Hmm. Uh, a good common ground to stand on would be the one we were robbed of when they made all the shit that's good for us illegal and all the shit that's mortally fucking wounding or lethal. That's all legal. And legal is just a, uh, it's a device to sell you something. doesn't matter what it is. All they got to do is just tack legal or illegal to it. And all of a sudden it has a different meaning. Uh, there was a time in history, I'm sure, where 
Guns were necessary. Animals attacked people. Shit like that happened. People attacked people. Now, they still do, but usually when they attack you, they at least give you a warning with red lights and blue lights and let you know they're gonna. <laughs> no surprises for the American citizen no more. You have been warned. Anyway. Ah, Vinny knew could I, he could tell because I'm breathing. Ah, funny, Vinny. Well, you know you need a license to break a law. That's what a license is. If you can defend a license in any logical fucking explanation, I'd love to hear it. But, here we go. Traveling is not driving. So, what they did was they called traveling driving. So they, they did this long enough that the person that was growing up to learn how to drive wouldn't even fucking know you're not driving anything. Driving is an act of commerce that you take to make a dollar. What you're doing is you're going to the store to go get me some cigarettes, fucker. Now go. <laughs> no, but uh, people don't know that. But the reason they don't know it is because the system changes shit paper-wise, legally, to accommodate their crime against us. And then, after they've fucking stolen something like roads, then have the nerve to try to charge you to drive a car on a road. Well, if they told you the truth about all that, you wouldn't go along with the scheme. So, how do they... How do they get away with... Where did all the people that knew the truth go? There's so few people today that have a clue about what's going on. It's it's just sad. That's just the way it is. You can't fight the system. Blah, 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 blah. Well, maybe not. Maybe you're right. Maybe we should just all give in and call up your local representative and tell him you want to live at Pizza Hut in the basement or a nice close by, you know, shut down Walmart. You know, don't. <laughs> wow. But the individual was lost in the group, and the group is growing. <laughs> Moose is having a good time with her kid on the reallibertymedia.com. Sorry to laugh, Moose, but it's just kind of strike. I was looking, and it caught me off guard. But that is kind of a trip, I suppose. Hmm. <laughs> good question on purpose, huh? Hmm. Ow. Anyway. So, let's see. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, today I was checking out Growing Potatoes. And this is our interesting. It was, turned out to be more interesting when I was done than it, than it was when I started it. But the reason is, I like potatoes. But I don't know how to grow a potato. I don't know how, I don't know nothing about where they, I know they come out the ground, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know anything but particularly about the plant itself or how to grow them. And I found a link today. This guy's advertising, you can grow potatoes in a five-gallon bucket. And this is how you do it. And his uh, video links, he went through the process of how you do everything. And which buckets to get so you don't get something that will poison your, your vegetables. And it's very informative. And uh, I have yet to see the end, the result but I saw the process of him growing the plants, which is all I needed to see. Digging them out, well, come on. You don't need a, a brain surgery kit to show you how to dig something out of a bucket. I think a five-year-old could pick potatoes. But uh, the do's and don'ts and, and how they get damaged by what and what to expect insects to do to your leaves. And there are all these variables. And I got interested in that, I think, probably because Grimm's got interested in gardening and he was posting his uh he got some sprouts he said it took a lot longer than he thought but that could be according to the soil that you're in there's a lot of shit you can do to add add to the quality of your soil to get a better plant result you know because just like us we're not fueled on very good stuff so as you can see in the chat the people that have the less nutrition type the worst <laughs> it's not a matter of education and money it's fucking food you know if you live at mcdonald's and you type on the internet you probably can't be understood by too many people but that's a whole nother topic isn't it <laughs> i get a kick out of my own jokes even if you don't like them i do <laughs> anyway let's see where are we 
You know, I was thinking about today, sadly, and it wasn't about America in particular, because I was watching a link about uh, Canada. Wow. Anyway, the state, whatever state you live in, whatever, you know, country you claim or, or live under whatever flag, we all got one thing in common. And that is the state assumes your ignorance. And uh, when before the show, I put on a link on uh, YouTube about America's dumbest people. And Cirque was all over that shit. She couldn't believe the questions that people couldn't answer because they don't know. And not knowing is that, uh, how do you blame that on the person that doesn't know? If they were never taught something properly in the first place, what do you expect them to know? And all the these trivial little details, like, you know, what is, they were showing them pictures of shit like an elephant, a gir- the kid could not identify a picture of a giraffe. I am not making this up. And they found it necessary to make a video about it and I found it necessary to open the video and see what they were talking about and it made my wife giggle I was kind of sitting here going well we're not all that stupid I mean I know I know a thing or two well maybe or one okay so I'm not that smart either but on the other hand I have a lot of opinions about shit that don't matter to anybody nobody anywhere on this planet is there that cannot live without my vast accumulative knowledge? And that's the way we treat each other. No, everybody's got what they need. I'm a, I'm an island. You know, I'm an individual. I know everything. You can't teach me shit. Uh, I forgot more than you'll ever learn. I've, I, you name it. I've, I've heard the cliche over the years, right? And now I'm in the age where I'm living the cliche. And seeing and things are changing here in my life uh, at this point faster than they were before. And the more I get into living, the more I'm noticing other people are all plugged into this fake world. And it's uh, very addictive. Now, I'm not stuck on the cell phone, but I am definitely addicted to the Internet. If the Internet goes away, I don't think I'm going to... Go jump off the roof and kill myself. I'll miss it for a bit because it's a lot of entertainment for downtime when I don't want to be busy doing other shit that needs to be done. But, uh, hmm. I don't know. I don't think I'd I'd probably go a week and find, "Ah, okay, that was fun. Get over it. A week of sobbing over my long-lost friend that saw me through the times when I didn't have anything in particular to do besides play games and chitter-chatter with friends. Or do uh, crazy radio podcasts about how I see this world thing that we don't even live in it. It's it's just a bunch of links and words on a screen. Uh, I didn't know any more about Denmark than I know about Zimbabwe. But the difference is I ended up going to Denmark. But if I was offered a trip to Zimbabwe, I don't think I'm going to Zimbabwe no matter what. Because that's not what I want to do. So, hmm. So, go back to that freedom of choice crap. Who knows? Maybe it's not freedom of choice at all. We just think it is. You know, you just do shit. And then to justify what you do to the system, because they got to know every fucking thing you do. Or you might be breaking a law. And, you know, how that is. Without that, they've got no money to support their problems. Kind of strange that they create the very problems that they solve. You know, like the weed thing. Hey, I got a good idea. Let's make smoking pot illegal. Then we can arrest people for smoking pot. Have you ever thought of anything more profitable in your whole life? There's tons. And you know what? We can even pretend people were smoking pot that weren't. It's our word against theirs. Who's going to argue with us? We're the system. But we don't get taught that to be suspicious of the most dishonest organization of thieves on the planet, the Admiralty Court, and their freaking agents, the police, 
and put two and two together and come out with a number that people could understand because everybody has a different opinion about these two things. Some people don't even believe the Admiralty Court has done anything. That They think this is just the way it is. But they don't seem to do the digging to find out, wow, 40 years ago you could go into a court and say this and then after a few, oh, suddenly that disappeared. They don't, they don't allow that in court as a defense. What could this thing that I'm not saying be? What am I hinting around but not saying? Why, of course, Internal Revenue Service. There's a reward for $50,000 to produce in ink or pen or paper, or whatever, the law from the federal government that requires the individual to pay federal income tax. And all they can ever do is show you that it's voluntary. But what they don't tell you is once you sign the ap application form to do it, that's all they need. They, you can't renege on that. You've signed their damn paper. And that's how they do it. That's how they do us collectively. They don't tell you what you're doing. They just tell you to do it. And until you come of a, I don't know, an age of reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe once you hit that age of reason, whatever that is for you, uh, you say, no, nah, enough's enough. And then there's other times where you need their services to make your life comfortable. And you're kind of held, I call it being held against your will, the driver's license. Right? I've known Mary and Grimm over the internet for years, and the one thing I've never heard them write on the internet is, I plowed into a car today because I was talking on my phone and killed three people. So, you know, uh, and to me, there's a difference between needing something and just wanting it because you can. And I've been in both positions where I could afford it because I wanted it. And I've been in the position of I needed it to afford to want it. <laughs> Work. You know, that slavery shit we got sucked into. All this economy-based shit. Competitive. Uh, what do you call it? It's all bullshit. Because if they really wanted to allow people to be what they claim they want us to be, we sure as fuck wouldn't be living in major cities on top of each other like a bunch of rodents. That would be completely out of the question. People would not be encouraged to uh, live in herds and uh, groups. Oh, there you go. Groups like uh, becoming a Republican or a Democrat. Now, I think to, I'm going to carry this on. I think that we, there should be a movement of people that come forward and say, I think the people that support the government should get ink. Maybe even on their hands. Something uh, maybe not as violent as mine, my idea. But some something that has to be applied to them by the people they're bowing to, so we know they're one of them, and uh, give us an opt out. You know, give us some kind of fucking uh, shit. It might be a shitty life, I guess, in the long run, if you had to live outside of the the tattooed group that wants to live in safety and you know financial security. Yeah, that. Remember, you know. Try explaining it to anyone about how fractional reserve banking works. Go on and try using fractional bank reserve banking in your uh, in your business. Hey, start a bank. See what happens. I'll bet you don't get the bank. I bet you can't open a bank without certain restrictions. Like what? They don't do anything that's real. It's all computer-generated thievery. And they, they take all of us equally, except for the people that actually have shit. They only take a little bit of theirs. See? They, the higher up the scale you go, the less of your shit you, that they take, not the other way around. And it's just fucking stupid. And all, all these people in, in power are concerned with is tax breaks for the rich to keep the poor working. Not tax breaks for the rich so that they can get richer. No, no, no. Let's lie to these motherfuckers and treat them like the scum they truly are and keep these idiots fucking on a treadmill. <clears throat> and some people don't see it that way. And some people manage to do what 
I did and other folks that I've talked to had did, and that is find ways to earn the fiat currency that weren't so much of a, a slavery that you hated doing it. So I found lots of fun things to do to earn money. Of course, as I got older, the things that I enjoyed over, you know, like this year span, man, like I loved to unload trucks when I was in my young 20s. It was quick money. Uh, the worst thing that could ever happen to you is maybe you have a, a load of um, onions or something and you need a shower. But still, the money for unloading a truck, jeez. Then how many trucks, you can unload two trucks in a day if you're, you know, up to it, I guess. Uh, sometimes I could. A lot of the times it was just unloading the driver that picked me up to where I was going. Said, yeah, hey, I'm going that way. And I'm unloading in so-and-so, right, you know, right near where you're headed. I said, well, you want to unload me, I'll, I'll drop you back where you're headed on the on my way back. And went, holy shit, sure. And it happened a lot more often. It was just like uh, there was a certain truck drivers that just kind of depended on the travelers to unload them and for a few bucks i mean it was just the way of the world at one point in life and now jeez, i don't think you can, i think it's illegal to hitchhike now, i remember the signs on the interstates and all that but i just pretty much ignored all that shit and the worst that ever came of it is a cop would chase me off the interstate every now and again i'll wait a half hour and go back on <laughs> get a ride before he came back and saw me again. whatever the fuck it was it, it didn't ever lead to trouble but uh I was still doing it when it was starting to become uh, financially successful for the police to jack you for doing it. And I think that's what it, what it is. Uh, <laughs> I remember hearing people say that they got a ticket for picking up a hitchhiker. Wow. Because, you know, that's uh, it's unsafe. You know, all this bullshit that they sell you because people are so... Uh, they're so lazy they can't look in front of them and see who, if the car's mo moving or not. I don't know what it is. Maybe the the other guy's not sitting on his brake lights in your rear end him because uh, you wanted to drive off the road into the <laughs> into the shoulder. That's where all the cars are going. <laughs> I don't know. Just losing my mind thinking about uh, just uh, the deceit and the trickery that it took to get us where we are. And how it's used on us. And, and I've said a 100,000 times, your signature is the most valuable thing that you own. But we're not taught that. No, 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 no. Now, cursive isn't even taught in school. How are people going to use their signature in the future if they don't know how to write a signature? They're going to write in freaking uh, capital letters? Uh, what do you call that? When they capitalize shit legally, what is it? It's, it's corporate. It's different. We're, and we're taught all these things. Now, the small letters are this and the big letters are that. But there's a meaning legally now behind the size of a fucking letter on a document. Now, if you don't know that, wow. I don't even know where to begin with all this. I have a, a, an instinctual desire to buck the system. At every opportunity I've ever gotten, you know, to... Uh, just be the one motherfucker that said, nah, I ain't going to do that. Nah, you guys, nah. Go away, oh, I'm busy, oh. And here I sit, you know, I didn't I didn't do what was expected of me. And I didn't do what people wanted. But I sure spent a lot less time being miserable about what I was doing than some of my peers. Mm -hmm. Uh, poo. You know, when things go wrong, people like to snivel and whine and, and stew in them for long periods of time. And me, I think, hey, man, if my life ends today, I sure don't want to waste all whining over that. So I'm going to go have me some fun. And uh, it's the hedonist, selfish way to be. But I figure life's too short in the long run to sit around all moping. Be all sorry for yourself about shit that you can't control any damn way. What other people do. <laughs> to me, I don't think it has anything to do with me at all, ever. Not even Cirque on certain levels. But don't don't you interrupt me when I'm live on the radio. <laughs> there goes my there goes my Danish wife. <laughs> uh, but 
You know, I sure won't. <laughs> Don't talk about Drunk Fight Club. See, I, I introduced her to this movie. It's called Cowboys and Idiots. I was talking about it the other day. But it, it's a parody film. And, and in one of the scenes, they're doing a, a takeoff of Fight Club. And they called it Gunfight Club. And the first rule of Gunfight Club is you don't talk about Gunfight Club. They're doing the whole thing for a fourth member. And there's only four people in the, you know, <laughs> in the lineup. So it doesn't go anywhere. But it was, uh, I don't know, it got, her, it got her giggle bone because she saw the parody in it. And that's what I mean. I see certain things as amusing. Cirque sees the same thing. Sometimes I don't mm. And other times, I show her this stupid movie about cowboys and idiots, and she, yeah, I, I get that, and she just knows. And then there's other other things that we disagree about that, well, we disagree about them, so what the fuck has that got to do with anything? The, uh, the shape of the world, the way the economy's going, or who's going to be the next POTUS, who gives a fuck? None of that shit in the overall really matters. Hey, we'll do, Vincent. But she went upstairs. She's trying to make it so that... See, because whenever I talk on the radio, she always interjects because she's in the room. And then I get all talking to her, and I forget I'm on the radio. <laughs> ah, you watched it. Which one? Oh, the uh, movie? Good, good, good. Vinny was just saying about that movie. It's dumber than shit, but the way the dialogue was written, there's a lot of creativity in the story behind what it's about. It's just kind of nonsensical, but there's like fun things to hear. <laughs> and, uh, the delivery of it was epic. I thought the characters were fun and I don't usually like a movie that damn much. That's that you know, and popular. Like I've never seen star Wars to this day, still have yet to see the original star Wars, let alone the remakes of it. But I did, um, I did read, on the interwebs that these things exist, but I've never seen them. Hold on one second here. Then again, there's always tomorrow. But yeah, thanks a lot for, uh, if you didn't watch the whole damn thing, it's still, at least he told me he didn't. And Vinny doesn't bullshit people, so he probably did. And he got the giggle out of it. And, you know, I think that is way more important right now in history than uh, enlightening somebody about some political fucking stand that in the overall. Your opinion about it doesn't mean fuck. Nothing. Zero duda. People were... Uh, I was showing Cirque that link about stupid people. And blah, blah, blah. And uh, part of it was they were asking people, young girls, uh, do, we're, we're planning military action against North Korea. Are you for it or against it? And they, right away, oh, I'm for it. Well, do you know where it is on the map? And they showed them a map of the world. And guess what? They didn't know where North Korea was. So, wow. Okay, so there you go. There is the collective heart at work. And with just words, okay, without, without even knowing who the enemy is, where they are, what they're doing... We have generations of people just raised with war, an enemy, so that if the U.S. is against that enemy, why isn't of any importance? They'll write something that will tell you who to hate. But the truth behind that is always something way different than what they told you. <coughs> yeah. Oh, you did watch it all. <laughs> That's funny. The things that get my attention... Nah, no Star Wars moves, not one, never, um, anything that popular has always been, in the long run, a disappointment, or at best, uh, a cliche, but uh, a good film, they don't even make good movies, I haven't seen a good, well-made film, maybe Silence of the Lambs was probably my last, hey, wow, that was something else, and movies as I was growing up got either stupider or i don't know more f so flashy that they they don't even have to have a story they just tell this other story that's been told 5000 times and they blow shit up and oh it's a new story sharknado fucking four ring a bell i mean damn sharknado one should have never made it through but uh, that's my point about 
people only know what they're taught. You can't just wake up and be full of knowledge. You've got to come from somewhere. People, Other people have to encourage you to follow a road or you're not going to know to go to it. Or you must go out in the world and just see what fucking comes your way. But I don't... How do you define that to a, another human life form? They're going to think different things about it altogether. But, hmm. I don't know. I... <laughs> I just know what I know, and I don't assume that I know what you know. Hmm. That's, yeah, there's, I guess that would be a a message to put out there, is I only know what I, what I see the way I see it, so your information to me is being perverted by my knowledge. <laughs> just as, you know, just as however you hear what I say, you hear it the way you hear it. So if you don't care for me as a a personality on the on the main feed of the reallibertymedia.com chat, then you're more than likely not interested in two words I've got to say on a radio program. That what what would the point of that be? You know, but I'm not trying to persuade anybody to do or not to do anything. There's no winning in that game. Everybody's stuck at whatever level of indoctrination they're at. That's where they are. When they face that and they look for ways out of being indoctrinated, that's the interesting part. Not this, join my freaking side. Trump's got a great big orange head and we're going to follow him to the promised land. No, you're not. (laughs) No, I have... Every every um, bone, every fiber of my being does not believe what other people believe. I, I don't know how to explain that. I mean, I look at cell phones and I just see trap. My wife loves her cell phone and it does all these wonderful things. And yeah, it's got a good side to it. But still, I don't have a cell phone like that. What for? To do what with? And I was at the bar a couple of months ago, and I forgot about this, but uh, the bartender that one of the girls, the younger girl that works there, and uh, I conversation was about the Internet. And she says, I don't have an Internet. I've got my phone. I don't need an Internet. What would I need that for? I'd just be on my phone anyway. Wow. And I went, slave. And, and I'm just as addicted to the Internet as anybody else. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm just saying that I'm aware of it. And I think that being aware of something has a value as opposed to being a part of something and blindly following it because other people are doing it. I'm not on the Internet because other people are doing it. I'm on it because it's available to me and it works. You know, It's not a... It's not an enemy of mine. I What I did was got ether cables to get off the Wi-Fi. You know, because I'm going to be bombarded by outside interference from some form, some way, somehow. But the shit that I find out about that I can take an action to fix, I do that. And I did it with baking soda. And I did it with turmeric and um, rosehip. And to this day, things, instead of getting worse, they seem to get better. Now, I overdid the smoking a little bit off the um, rollies. And if you're a smoker, you know that the way that you use your your cannabis affects the outcome of your physical reaction to it. And there's some things that uh, react to it. One person that's smoking a pipe and, and somebody else can smoke it out of the pipe and they'll get a different reaction than the other guy and I got a negative not sickening it just negative reaction from rolling it in a paper so but I don't get that like tired I got sleepy it was weird and a little bit of a headache so hmm. and I thought wow but I'm aware of the mistakes that I make even as I make them but I go hmm I wonder if I can beat it this time (laughs) oh no Denmark doesn't have free internet Uh, Cirque works for a company that provides it to her as part of her job so it's in the house because she works at home on the internet sometimes so (laughs) I didn't mean to make you think that it was free I just 
I think it should be. I don't see any reason for these thieves, basically, to jack us all. Because uh, I've lived in places where, you know, people need, I needed, needed me to kick in to, to pay bills. That was the reason I was there. Without my financial assistance, they would have been a little short. So, hey, they needed some help. I needed a place to stay. Shit like that would happen when I was young all the time. Uh, but, no, I didn't mean to make you think it's free here. It's just uh, Cirque, Cirque made it free by her decisions about who to slave to, you know. She's uh, definitely not hurting herself by working for the people she works for. She really likes her job. She, Her sister works there, too. So she, if you don't know, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know much about us, I suppose. But uh, her sister works there, so she gets to... And they're close. They're like uh, sisters are supposed to be. You know, I see her sister over here about once a month on it. Well, maybe on, on an average... Maybe every once every six weeks or so, she'll come over here to the house. And sometimes she brings her kid. Sometimes she brings her kid and her husband. Sometimes she brings her mom. But there's always uh, something going on, you know, with the family because these people are tight. And my initiation into life here... Uh, it's not the Danish people that are so freaking impressive so much as the family that I married into are good representatives of that culture. And the ages, all the ages, the nieces, the nephews, there's not a big family, but there's a few of them. Uh, and everybody I've met has been very uh, friendly and cordial. You know, the way they treat marriages in the family is they're married, not us. You know, It's not your business. So things get, things are a lot more comfortable here without a lot of other people giving you advice and telling you what to do but where I'm from the American way is to help when you're not even asked to do anything and then when you're asked to not help then the person that you're helping is being rude and now you got a reason to hate them and <laughs> I spent a few days on the you know they hate me list a few times over the years anyway yeah uh let's see oh uh, they're talking about all kinds of crazy stuff on the real liberty media.com chat um a lot of the well cirque's on a salary job too so um i don't know but minimum wage here uh, what it is i don't have to work here luckily I'm a little old to be working anymore anyway, so I'm a retired felon now. But uh, I don't know if it's $20 an hour. Uh, it's got to be some, It's got to be decent. I don't, I don't know if it's that low. Because uh, I know people that make, uh, well, it might be because of the exchange. I'm trying to do the math in my head and talk at the same time. Having a little trouble. But I think. 200 kroner would buy you about oh 30 bucks worth of american dollars so it's like uh, 100 kroner is like uh, 15 bucks but the value of the kroner and the value of the dollar and all that uh, offsets everything i believe in <sighs> because of the fractional reserve banking practices that they've suckered us all with. So hmm. I'd like to be all cool. And there's some uh, smart people on the real liberty media.com chat that know that know how to do that with in a more serious fashion. And uh, they're not likely to make an error. Me, eh, I got vague ideas about this shit, but hmm. not believing in it in the first place and, depending on it uh, with all my being you know oh if we went broke oh yeah fuck i know how to make money when there's no money to be made that is not the point uh the point is i think that hmm things are made more comfortable for the worker i got it straight off it but yeah in here in denmark i don't know about the the minimum wage they work on union contracts. Their unions haven't been uh, manipulated like the Americans were. 
I was in the UAW in the 70s, man, and I'm telling you, what a scam. They kept, they, the only things that, that your union would do would be to protect, you could keep your job, you know, and that was always personal shit, violence or stupidity, had never had anything to do with the job, it was politics, who liked you, who didn't like you, whose wife you were fucking and got caught fucking, blah, 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 crap like that. But the only part the union played was protecting the worker from being kicked out of the job because he was a piece of shit in personal life, which had nothing to do with work. If they showed up on time and they did their job, that was fine. Now, if you fucked your you know friend's wife and he got pissed off about it and took it out on you at work, it was still not work-related somehow because they had union reps to mangle all that paperwork and say things the legal way so it would read just ever so and we've been conned by these fuckers over the years just huge you know what what started out as a necessity always turns out to be a a manipulation of everybody by just a few fucking greedy pricks and then most of the public sits back and praise these freaking morons for their great work when they didn't do anything they just fucking lie to us while they make inoculations legal. Mandatory even in some places. California is pushing for mandatory inoculations into the children's. The children's! Because the children's must be free. And safe from disease. And, wow. Well, I, I'm pretty limited on my input on all this. Uh, I'm just going to end up being repetitive Regarding that particular topic, Mr. Inoculations, I'm so disappointed. I think I refuse to listen anymore to the uh, to the side that promotes the decay of the fucking society. And it's a decay like, uh, hmm, it's an internal thing. They got you in your health. You know, if you're seeing a doctor or if you're ill, guess what? I think who's responsible for that? Because I was ill. And I was seeing a doctor in 2011, but here we are in 2019, and I'm not doing any, either of those. And I had a little bit of a headache from a little bit too much weed rolled in the yeah, wrong way, ingested it wrong. Yeah, it gave me a little headache as, oh, hey, don't do so much. But that's, I'm fine. Well, you know, not bedridden. I, I recovered quickly from my little mishap, and here I am doing a radio program. I mean, right, even though I didn't really have anything like usual, nothing in particular, you know, to make a big statement about. Everything's bullshit. We all know that. Oh, and if uh, I don't know Bobby Bain, I don't know if he listens from uh, over at realliberty.org, but I catch him. I catch a link or two or a, a good morning or a good night because we, we have different hours on, on the electronic world. And he was talking about getting him some more land up in the Colorado. And he got himself a vehicle. So he's putting another engine in it. He's a roofer. So supposedly it's been raining a little bit lately. So he's had some, some time to st sit in the house. And <laughs> he's going to master the guitar someday. But he'd rather work. So yeah, at least you got a guitar to, to fuck with while you're off time. So you can at least do things that are fun. While you can't be out, you know, making the necessary fucking fiat money to pay the shit. Uh, see the rat trap. The, the, this is the very reason that I, and the core of why I see this all as like some kind of enslavement. Why in the world should it cost us money to eat food when if you don't eat food, why you die? Why is it a for profit business? Aren't there enough? Uh oh. Duh. Vinny went all nuts on the main feed with uh, something's downloading script and uh, printing the script instead of the picture. All right, I, I'm just making that assumption based on what happened to Don earlier and what Cirque said, because I don't really know. But when I see that much stuff and it's all scribbly doo da, something went wrong. Ever. Anyone ever seen a Newfoundland? It's a dog, isn't it, huh? I think if you're talking about a dog, I think a big, gigantic dog. And if I'm wrong, then I've never seen a Newfoundland. 
I just have it confused with something that I thought was a dog was called. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the chat's all jacked up right now. Hmm. And me, I don't know. I'm just trying to hang in there through another podcast and, you know, repeat some of the things that I've learned to uh, the listening radio audience out there in the world that, uh, I don't know, that find the, the mainstream entertainment a little bit dull. And I sure as fuck do. I don't, I don't subscribe to, uh, what do you call it, like TV programs I got to watch every week. And they're on at a certain time. I don't give a flying fuck. If it's even good, I'll wait two years for it to come out and then can throw it on Netflix. I don't, and I'll watch it when I feel like watching it, not when it's on. This slave mentality strikes me in so many different ways than other people. You know, oh, but everybody gets to see it at the same time. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, that's that's just freaking honky. Hmm. Ah, then Huz being a funny guy, it all makes sense. But I don't know. I guess uh, he wasn't talking to me when he asked if he ever seen a Newfoundland. But I thought it was a dog. Now my curiosity has got the better of me, and I can't even look it up on the interwebs because I'm talking out the other side of my neck, and I'm kind of busy right now. But uh, hmm. you know, are are you feeling occupied yet, people? I mean. Feeling occupied must have some way to identify itself that you could explain to somebody else, you know. What is occupation? I think occupation is what the cops have done. They once held a, a, you know, a duty to the public and served a purpose towards the common good. Hmm. Oh, it is a breed of something. Thanks, Grimner. I'll, I'll open that up. I ain't afraid of your posts. Some people suppose I wouldn't open up with Hansel's computer. But yours anytime, sir. A uh, uh, little ass kissing on the... Wow, well, yeah, that's it. That's a big freaking dog, too. My God, that dog's bigger than I am. Well, I don't I don't stand on all fours, but if that dog was standing up, it, I'd, I'd look small. But, any, but do you feel occupied? <laughs> a lot of vacuuming there. Yeah, my cat's requiring a lot of that. He's shedding now. He's got no nuts. Anyway, I'm asking you, Crashhead, out there in the reallibertymedia.com world, are you people feeling occupied yet? I I've got like this vague notion of occupation, but the way I justify it is because if I'm going to play in a society where I can go to and do commerce and get milk and food and all the cigarettes and all the little necessities that make me uh, feel better about living, well, I'm going to play that game. That's not such a bad game. But when I do these things, I have my own personal set of requirements and one of them is to not be treated like a moron in a retail outlet by a moron. And for some reason in, in the States, uh, they've really had a knack for putting the wrong person behind cash registers selling shit. And, uh, or sometimes just even selling things. They didn't even know what they were selling. And as a salesman from the sales force of the world, I would say it always helped me to know what the fuck I was selling to somebody so that when I told them what it was, it would carry over in my demeanor and they would understand and more than likely believe me if I was hitting their honest bone. And a, a lot of times... It just seemed to me to make good sense. You know, if I was going to sell a coupling to some guy, I ought to know what a coupling is and what it does and how it works and all that shit. So it took a little time to do some reading and talk to the guy in the warehouse and go, hey, what does this do? What am I'm selling this. Show me how it works. And uh, I talked one of the guys into cutting up a 20-foot piece of hose into four-inch samples so I could go on a mail run. And I got into a lot of trouble for it till it paid off. And it paid off on a day when we were all getting bitched at about sales being down that week. You know, it's a Saturday. And he got us all off the damn phones. 
guy was named Dale. <laughs> anyway, so Dale's bitching at everybody. Oh, he's pissing and moaning and yelling and ranting and raving and doing his nasty, dirty talk to all over us. And while that's going on, I get a call in to, to load 20 trucks because I sent the guy out a sample. And it was huge. But, see, in the my reality, things are a lot different than they work in other people's and other people just listen and do what they're told and never, never ask what they don't understand. They just listen to that and then they don't pursue it any further. Me. Oh, wait a minute. I had a birth certificate. What the fuck is a birth certificate? Anyway, how did I get a birth certificate? Maybe I didn't want a birth certificate. So when I got into the internet thing, I went, Hey, what's this? And it was a little like a comic, thing and it said uh, meet your straw man so i wanted to know what the fuck is meet your straw man so i opened it up and i listened to it and apparently there's a version of uh, the birth certificate that it's not made public it's not made common knowledge that everybody knows and everybody can understand but when you go to court if you understand that you have a straw man and how they use the straw man, it helps you to understand what's going on in court because that is not what you see on TV. You're going to think, Hey, I'm going to go in there. And some girl with a dress up to her fucking ass is going to lean on that desk and show that judge your ass and free me from the jaws of death. But no, that's not what happens. No, 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 no. And it's not all like Ted Bundy either. Ted Bundy decided to defend himself at the end. And the judge was kind of cruel to him, you know. Oh, if you weren't a murdering fuck, I would have loved to have done, you know, some time in court with you, son. You would have been a fine lawyer, blah, but you're a psychotic murderer and I have to order you to death. See ya. And <laughs> I'll be up in a bit. It's almost over, honey. I'll be up in 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> English Mastiff's drool. Hmm. I think uh, the reason I'm familiar with those dogs in the first place, uh, when I was in North Carolina, a friend of the people I was living amongst had two of those big dogs. and But I didn't go over there more than maybe once or twice. But I, I believe those were Mastiffs, and they were huge. And then they had this other dog, a minimum-sized dog, but they had to get rid of the dog because the other two dogs didn't like the little dog. But yeah, the drooling, I remember that. Yeah, nasty dogs. Hmm. But big and still, a dog is a dog. How can you not love a dog? <laughs> Maybe so, drool machines or not, but still. I don't have the I don't have the room or the resources or the in interest in that size of a dog to bother. But it's nice to know that when he asked what it was, I knew, I knew something. See, there's a statist in me somewhere. It just, it, it only surfaces in trivia and uh, I don't know. How often, how often do I go statist? Well, I married Cirque, so there's a statist move. But it was a, you know, uh, it was a life decision to make, you know. Do you want to stay and, and not be? <laughs> and not be accepted because of your legal status? No, that would not do me. I'd hate that. That would make me crazy. So we did the legal shit to, you know, make everybody happy. But we'd already done the ink stuff before that. So the marriage thing, again, state, uh, it's a way to um, get through society pretending to abide by the rules because, you know, people can get divorced, you know. Shit like that. But people like me and Cirque don't... That's not our way. You know, that that divorce shit, that's legal. Uh, that in, That's in, involving stuff, you know, and things and possessions. And my, my marriage with Cirque ain't got fuck all to do with no stuff or possessions. It's different. <laughs> it's too funny to be true. Actually... In a, in a lot of ways in life, financially, I've downsized my my living to uh, be comfortable. I don't have to work so damn much of the time, blah, blah, that kind of thing. And uh, it's living smaller is uh, it's practical. And it suits my, you know, my lazy style of living where I don't want to be a slave to a car. And 
Oh, a slave to insurance and a slave to regulation and rules and abiding by this. And I say, fuck it. I just walk. Who's going to bother me walking? You know, as long as I'm not walking with a gun or <laughs> threatening people in the street to beat them up, nothing can go wrong. And it sounds pie in the sky, but I've been living this a long time. And I'm telling you, it once you hit a certain age, maybe, I don't know, but uh, it works for me. And at 20% off, I think I did a 20% off. I voiced my usual opinions about stuff and, uh, I don't know, told you why I think voting is insane. Oh, yeah, that's what I'll call that. But, on the other hand, I could be wrong. <laughs> you never know. But, I'm right for me. And, uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect anybody out there that, that hears the program to believe that I expect you to make your life fit my expectation. Because when you come right down to it, even if I know you, even Vinny, I don't have any expectation of how Vinny lives his fucking personal life. All I care about is how Vinny treats me. And my wife, I, mean, I guess I weigh that into the equation. That, Ah, she got an I love you over the radio. Ha, 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 ha. And uh, what do we got on the lineup here? Let me see. We're on Thursday. Thir my wife's distracting the shit out of me. Uh, we're on Thursday night. So that means tomorrow. She does this Wednesday and Thursday. And fr Thursday. Wednesday and Friday. Uh, seven, excuse me. 7 p.m. on the east. Huh, on the east coast. The Grammy Does Her Rocket Chair podcast. Uh, I'm trying to type and talk at the same time, and I can't do it. It's impossible. Uh, anyway, that's at 7 o'clock. Then 11 o'clock, Grim and Moose Girl are in the Freaker's Ball. And if Moose is off, I read something about it. She's got a few weeks to wait. But she's going off festivaling, but I don't think it's tom t uh, tomorrow night, so... But I'm just preparing myself. And Vinny thinks I forget him. <laughs> Vinny's been doing a ponder gander on on Fridays. But the reason I forget him is because he changes the freaking time sometimes. And, uh, yeah, and uh, you never know. You know, sometimes, oy, sometimes Vinny is just Vinny. And I don't know what time to announce you, Moko. You keep messing me up every time. But. If all is well, it should be 1 o'clock on the East Coast. Now, was that remembering you enough? <laughs> you Anyway, uh, Saturday I do the dork table, sometimes hostage, sometimes hostage-less. Sunday morning, we got the blues up to trivia. And then 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we got Hell Anthony come some free bomb from behind the woodshed. And laps a couple people with a few words. And everybody learns something. It's really simple. Monday night, live in New Mexico at an undisclosed location, <coughs> Grimner does Grim Leftovers. You know, the stories he didn't he didn't get around to because of all that annoying music that he plays on Friday night on the Freakers Ball. <laughs> I like saying that. That was fun. Uh, and then Wednesday... Grammy Mary at 7 on the East Coast Rocket Chair. And then if anything, oh, I forgot us. Me and Vinny on Tuesday night. <laughs> I skipped Monday right into Wednesday. How much do I smoke on a show? My God, I'm losing my mind here. Uh, when, Tuesday night, me and Vinny are going to do <clears throat> In a Perfect World where we negotiate all the shit that's worth negotiating for no particular reason, just because we can. And then uh, Thursday, I come back next week with another exciting, thrill-packed episode of 20% off. But I might have to change. And I, if I change the name of the show, then Grimm's got to work. So I just leave it alone. But I might be up to like 22 or 23% off, depending on who's listening. Anyway, thanks a lot for hanging out tonight, folks, if you did. And if you didn't, you should have. I thought I was funny. <laughs> I especially enjoyed the tattooing people for voting so that they could be responsible for the shit their leaders do. But I know that's not going to go anywhere, but I have a dream. <laughs>